Hey everyone, before we start this next episode of Mass Effect Iron Man Edition, I want to put up a disclaimer, uh, because during this episode, we, me and the chat and, and Inferno get into a, a debate uh, about something in the DLC that uh, I wasn't really happy with when I went back and watched it. I, I don't necessarily think that I was being a dick or, or said anything offensive to anyone else, but there's certain ways to do debates and there's certain ways not to do debates. And uh, I, while I believe in the position I took, and I still do, you know, right now, I feel I fell into this trap of yaha na uh, yaha na uh, yaha na uh, and that's not a good way to debate because nothing's gained or learned from that. All it does is make the opposition feel friction and grates on them and it annoys them, and it can tend to make them feel like their position is not really being heard, even if it is. So I wanted to put that out there that when I rewatched this, I realized that it kind of I fell into that trap, and I abhor falling into that trap because it's just not not good tact or, or, or what would you call enlightened debate. Um, and, and I like to correct those mistakes when I find that I have made them. So I'm making this. I thought about doing post commentary, but then I would lose the whole tension. You know, if, if I know whether I lived or died and there's no stress and there's no, you know, there's no tension to it. So I decided to leave it all in, but put this disclaimer there that again, I'm not apologizing for my views because I really do believe what I said. And I don't think I came out and said anything, uh, insulting or, or upsetting, but I do feel that I handled the whole debate less magnanimously than I should have. Uh, and maybe it was because it was late, maybe it was because of the stress of the episode, whatever the case may be, it's important to be able to understand when you make these kind of mistakes and make sure other people know you understand when you make these kind of mistakes and hopefully try to avoid them in the future. So, with that out of the way, um... Let's let's get on to possibly the last episode of Mass Effect 2. Possibly the last episode of Mass Effect 2 before we restart Mass Effect 2 slightly uglier. Who knows? Hey everyone, Screen913 with Inferno who's currently getting a drink. Welcome back to possibly the last episode of this game if I die. And then the next episode will be the next game if I don't die. If I do die, it'll be the first episode of this game again. <sighs> you guys gotta get more peanuts and moon plates. Are. Welcome to Project Face. <laughs> What's this? That's our Look, countdown to arrive. We put in a giant timer so we know exactly when we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Great. If we put it it's above like every, if we put it above every door, so you could never forget. <laughs> You're saying the Reapers could be at Earth in two days? There's no time to waste. Then let's show you that proof. That door exits the hangar. The artifact is in our central lab area. All right. I honestly can't like. Go through the door at the end of that corridor. Yeah, to I am. Talking, Kenson. Like, I don't think it's hit me that I'm really like almost done with game two without having like yeah. on my first try. <laughs> Very I'm impressive. So afraid every time you say that you're gonna jinx yourself. No, so man, I got it. I ain't even gonna knock on. Yeah, I'm I not got superstitious this. anyway. You can say whatever you will. All I can say, giant fart titties, and it won't mean anything. What? What? Why did you have to say that? <laughs> oh no, I've ruined everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, people who watch this, I kind of think I'm such a weirdo. I am. I'm not a dangerous weirdo, everyone. I'm pretty safe. Oh my gosh! What Wait. the hell is going Wait. on? Wait! <laughs> that was so not cool! I am tripping balls. <laughs> now, see if that had killed me, I would have just reloaded. We have to get the project running again. It's probably the only chance we have. One sec. Let me get the door. Commander Shepard, I give you Object Row. You have the Reaper artifact just sitting here, out in the open. When we found it, it's because you it said showed me a vision fart of the Reaper's arrival. <laughs> this is not good. Give it a moment, Shepard. It'll give you the proof you need. I can't let 
you start the project, Shepard. I can't let you stop the arrival. I can't let you stand up. Oh crap, I let you stand up. <laughs> Take her down! Quick, Kasumi, get... Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, right. Armor, armor, armor. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. See if I can do this. I got my nice little hidey hole here. Don't make this difficult, Shepard. Do not resist. <gasps> Give yourself over and be spared. Harby! How's it going, buddy? Still trying to take over the universe? That's great. I'm gonna awesome. stop you. Oh, hello, pyro -y guy. I'm, uh, well, in a second, I'm about to hit you with an overload. And you're gonna go boom. Shablam. See? Just like that. We don't want to hurt you. As they're shooting you. We just want to shoot you with bullet. Oh wait, that hurts. You. That's okay. Uh, um. Oh gosh. Get the barrier up. You know what? I have a sniper rifle. Let's use that, baby. Yay! They're certainly far enough away for that. Oh gosh, Pyro! Hi, Pyro. Did I get him? I got him. Nice. Pray. I'm remembering something from this, but I look forward to seeing what the crap is actually going to happen. It's only a matter of time. I think she's talking to her own soldiers. It's only yeah. a matter of time until Shepard finishes you. Just, just bear with it. Hello, heavy man. Okay. The good news is it can't get that close to me. Why not? Because. Is it too fat? I'm telling it not to. I, I said no. Oh, gosh. I said it can't get that close to me. Go away. Oh gosh, oh gosh. I can throw it now at least. Surviving for a very, very, very long time. It's because I'm a boss. Whee! <laughs> Killing a bunch of people who are just doing your job, you're taking way too much pleasure out of that. 
Yep. I have problems. I have learned to accept them. They should. <laughs> please, please, soldiers, accept my insanity, my mental instability. Are you the only one left? Oh, you are, aren't you? Come on, these people. How does it feel? How does it feel to be all alone? <laughs> oh my god. I was just a sadist. Huh? Huh? How does it feel, Missy? Oh, now your now your shields are gone. What are you gonna do? Here, look. Free hits. Come on, free hits right here. Come on. Oh, did you try? Yeah, use some fire. Come on. Someone's gonna come up behind you. And come just on. Probably. You can do it. Free hits. Free Your hits. Come on. Now. You gotta do better than that. Aim for the eye. For the eye. God, did no one teach you how to shoot? No, I'm an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> they taught me how to engineer. That's it. I gave you enough free shots. My turn. Now sit down. Good girl. Oh, sit back up, sit back down. You shall be the first to witch Use the nuke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't feel so good. mean to alarm you, but I think you've been possessed by a demon. So if I remember correctly, you can either just kill everyone in that explosion wall and knock you down, or you could drop because they shoot you down and it right. still gets to this point. Right, so you, you don't you don't die, you instead just get to this fail. point. So this is like the one point in the game I really could have failed and been fine. Like yeah. But I didn't. But it could be a <laughs> you don't even fail correctly, Squeeze. <laughs> what kind of hope do you have? Darn it! Uh. So no just me have a facial animation. It's kind of a little derpy than God, the rest of the game. What did I drink? Absolutely. Oh boy, the cops cheese it. <laughs> yep, beating up police officers definitely was <laughs> drinking absinthe. Gotta love the music in this. The, the face animations did get a little strange, but the yeah. music, the atmosphere, the whole the story. I loved the story in this one. It was mm -hmm. admittedly not as strong as Overlord or, or Shadowbroker, but still really good. The project is almost complete. I thought I'd feel a sense of accomplishment, but instead, I feel dread. I Th can't help but think we're doing something terrible. That's because you're batty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, wait, no, she said step away from the console. I guess I should. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't step away from the console. Oh, God, I am not telling to do that. No, this doesn't count as death either. I know there's gonna be someone in the comments going, Oh yeah, the next die. Problem, problem. If it does die. Oh, I forgot this part. I always found this really neat too. Yeah. Can sympathize with the robots now. Help me, robots! Oh, I'm I one of you. Didn't even die here. Yay! You stand right next to it. <laughs> there goes the robot. All to the wing. Mm. See? Oh, mm. I'll mm. never forget you, Harold. Nameless. <laughs> There. Everyone is named Harold. I'm starting to think you might have a brain aneurysm. Shepard's been sedated constantly for two days now. We've had to increase each dosage. It seemed like Shepard was waking up a moment ago. But it could be a glitch in the system. No glitch. The sedatives aren't working. You know what I appreciate about Femme Shepard the most? What? Regardless of, um where she is, or what the situation is, or how much pressure there is, or how deep into combat she is. She always has time to put on mascara, in like just the perfect way. 
So her eyes look nice and full. She, 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 she's not lazy. She, 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 she remembers the important things in life. Yeah, mascara. Mascara. <sighs> Question, questions. Do I keep the cane? No, it's too dangerous to keep the cane. I am going to. Yeah, take... you don't say. <laughs> I'm take the arc projector. Ooh. Moving and get the hell out of here. According to Alpha, though, every girl can do that. It's like a natural mm -hmm. ability. Yeah, you never know when there's a photo op. <laughs> they always spec into makeup. <laughs> they spec into makeup. First, first special ability is like putting on a good foundation. The second is blush. Third is mascara. They actually have a, a feat for dual wielding makeup brushes. Yeah, and then you can get you can specialize into either pedicures or manicures. <laughs> you can also multi-class, but you don't get as good in either one. No, no, right? So, you know, do you want to have cute toes, or do you want to have nice nails? Or do you want to have kind of cute nails, toes, and nails? Well, I guess. That's a weak build, man. <laughs> Paragons go for nails. Renegades go for toes because they're going to be kicking a lot of ass, so they want to make sure people can see it. When I went through it, I made sure to spec all the way up my lipstick first. <laughs> uh, boy. I know nothing of makeup. <laughs> we have just extended all of my knowledge of makeup. I know makeup. I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show. Archelion says, Avenge the Burning Gate. Who have like long femme fatale fingernails. Or, or cocor fingernails. Just one fake nail on the pinky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, Shelly did not special, special, specialize in eyebrow grooming. No, she actually, uh. See, what she did is she did. She decided to specialize. She put all her build into eyeshadow, blush, and lipstick, yeah. and had all none left over for uh... Yeah, she spent all her points, and she can't re rebound. And actually, in order in order to give her more points than other things, she took a penalty on the eyebrows. Oh my god! They gotta nerf that build. <laughs> it's worked well so far. I got almost all the way through this game. We're looking exactly. fam they gotta looking nerf that shit. fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous! <laughs> like it's not—it's not a matter of like surviving. It's a matter of getting through the whole game while still looking, looking fabulous. great. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's understandable. Can I mean, you can't go—you can't go to the Reapers looking like you know you just crawled out of bed. Can Shelly bake muffins? What do you, what kind of class do you think she is? She ain't no cook. She didn't take home economics. She took fucking laser blasters. That's a—that's <laughs> that's an entire different class with entirely different builds. God, get it right. Damn it. <laughs> You know, if Smudboy had his way, he would have a baking sim with in inside Mass Effect 2. No, 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 no. You just have, like, your different classes instead of, like, Vanguard Engineer. It's like, uh, Valley Girl, Butch. Cheerleader. Cheerleader. <laughs> Sexy Librarian. Alright. You gotta, you gotta choose the good wife build in order to make muffins. That's horrible. <laughs> I know. If you, if you picked Stepford Wife, though, you don't really have much control. It already chooses the dialogue options for you. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God, I'm laughing too much. I can't concentrate. So I'm going to kill the way, you, bro. By the way, we want to we wanna stress that we don't uh, condone those kind of actions. We're yeah, just we're not sexist. <laughs> we're, we're, we're feminists, so... Oh. <laughs> you don't have any dialogue options. <laughs> I didn't design this sex. If you choose the Stetford wives, right. <laughs> you can only speak when spoken to. Well, you know, to be fair then, you know, we, 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 we should be equally stereotypes for male chef. You have, uh, you have, uh, you have the Brody. build. You have the Brody build that's pretty strong. Brody build, the, the, bro, the fresh dude. men. Yeah, dude, bro, bro dudes. Dude, bro, where you just annoy your enemies, and your special ability is pop collar. Make sure, make sure to spec heavily into alcohol tolerance. Yeah. Yeah, and, and really shitty pickup lines. 
I once made an entire build centered around uh, the fro. It, it worked. Really? Yeah. The fro? That's like 1970s. Wow, I that's tried. Like I, I, I tried the redneck build, uh, spec it into wife beater. Uh, <laughs> shirts, shirts. Oh my god, the shirts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dear God, the shirts. See, I'm sorry, but less... even my humor has limits. <laughs> I went with the shotgun and beer gut build myself. I'm a uh, traditionalist. And then I was able to find the uh, the NASCAR beer cap. Yeah. Actually, they did kind of have a bro chef. <laughs> it's James Vega and that's the <laughs> Kind of true. ASA. Okay. Thanks, James Vega. Yeah, we're wandering. Hey, I'm not wandering the dangerous territory, Alpha. Squee is. I'm the one who's pulling back. I brought up the male stuff to balance out the weird crap. Homophone shit. Oh no. Did you die? No, she just said I won't get through here. I guess I gotta go back. I'm going back. Is there a timer? No, there's no. <laughs> she said I won't get through here. What am I gonna do? She wouldn't lie. Why would you do that? Squee. And they won't tell you too trusting for your own bit. No. That's well, there true. was one guy, but I didn't trust him. <laughs> Just this spider. <laughs> You're too trusting for your own good. I don't trust you. Well, I, I guess that's a start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shepherd, I'm a shepherd. Watch me roar. Roar! It's my ship. That's my Shelly roar. You know, when I'm done with this, Daddy Hackett owes me like a million moon pies. Moon pies? Oh yeah, Shelly Shepherd loves moon pies. That's how. That's how. Uh, that's how she managed to. Uh, keep Zaid on the team after his loyalty mission. He gave her some moon pies and she's like, okay, I'll forgive it. See, I'm surprised because Shelly Shepard takes good care of herself physically, so I'm kind of surprised that she does. Right, which oh. gives her the ability to eat as many moon pies as she wants. Oh, I see. So she's not doing this to be in great physical conditioning, you know, be able to do those stretches and I'm sorry, did you try and kill me with fire? No. Bad pirate. <laughs> Nope, nope, she did it just so she can just eat whatever she wants. Pretty much. When Shepard retires, she's just be like, I'm just gonna go on an island and just get fat. It's gonna be great. Actually, this is gonna make all the girls jealous. No, nope, no, nope. Shelly's, uh, never, she has a high metabolism. She can eat whatever she wants and never gain a pound. Jelly much? Because I know I am. <laughs> Alpha, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think, you know, we might be isolating our female viewers. We gotta be more astute. No, well, I was, I, I said I was jealous of it. I can't do that either. That's not really, oh, a, me neither. it's not I like, can't. it's not like women are the only ones that get fat by eating things. <laughs> Wait, slow down. <laughs> eating food makes you fat? <laughs> It's, it's fresh research, just hot, hot off the press. <laughs> uh, I think we need to alienate the male populace a little bit more. <laughs> they have the bro ship, and then they have the brony ship. Oh no, 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 I'm leaving. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> I'm equal opportunity offend every gender. I'm not really offended, I'm just disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my god. I just had an image, like, there's no difference except he has, like, Rainbow Dash's hair. That's it. Alright. Let's create some genocide, shall we? Welcome to Project Control. I want to activate the project. Warning. Activating the project will result in... Well, it can't be genocide if it's unintentional, right? Do you wish to continue? <laughs> yes, it can. <laughs> well, hang on. I'm curious, though. Is this still counting as genocide? Because she's not doing it to wipe out Batarians. They just happen to all be Batarians. <laughs> if it was full of Asari, she'd probably be killing Asari. Yeah, I guess a genocide has to be a systematic destruction of a people. This is just horrible collateral damage. Yeah. Really. And I know I'm making light of it, but this is... This is... This is weird. fucking huge. Yeah. Alert. All colonists living in the Bahak system. This is good. Shepard, no. Do you have any idea what you've done? You leave me no choice. If we can't stop this asteroid, it must be destroyed. Tell me where to find Dr. Amanda Kenson. Dr. Kenson is traveling to the reactor core module. An ESO core meltdown should do it. Alert. Batarian colony. Cheese it. Not if I get to you first. Let's go! To Kokomo. We'll get there fast and then we'll take it slow. Oh my god! He sat down in the splits! Yeah. Yeah. It's embarrassing and fatal. The worst kind. It's interesting, yeah, it's just another, it, this This is just another example of you have to just pick one of two bad choices. Mm -hmm. Actually, you don't get to choose, but yeah. Well, in the, the logic of the game is one of two bad choices. One, you let the Reapers come early, which kills a lot of people. Or, you exterminate Batarians to slow down the Reapers, which still kills a lot of people. Yeah, honestly, like I, I love the people that they are sitting there, like that were they were criticizing it, like they didn't let me choose, and I'm like, okay, if you would have chosen the other option, you're a horrible person. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. There's not don't always. Don't try to two stop choices. me, Shepard. I have to do this. Let's see. I don't want to kill 300,000 Batarians, so I'm gonna let the Reapers kill trillions of people. That sounds like a great idea. At least it won't be on my hands. I've already activated the project. We can still escape this rock. Hey, Warden. There is no escape. There's no redemption for what you've done. I will die, never having seen the Reaper's blessings. And you will just die. That's a good point, Arkane. That makes a good point. Damn it, Kenson! You kill the 300,000 Batarians, or you let the Reapers kill trillions, including those 300,000 Batarians. Yeah. There. It's just a shame because these people didn't get the choice. They're being sacrificed without a choice. Yeah. And, and, and I love the, this argument I love even more. Well, they should have given me a third option. Oh, because life is always so rosy. Well... You know, I, I am a firm believer is that, you know... There are a lot of false dilemmas in the world, and there are other solutions, but for something like this in a fantasy deal with dealing with such, you know, grave consequences, you know, you don't have to put in a three option just to make everyone feel good. Right? It, it was all, my, my answer to that was always yes, and this option would be, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, something. Oh, yep. uh, how very well thought out of you. I mean, seriously, what other option could you put in? I could have um, found you a way take to... take out your magic wand. I could have found a way to destroy the relay without blowing it up. What? Yeah, because yeah, I'm Shepard. Uh, I could have had the w option to warn them, but you did have the option to warn them. And then she cut off your communication. Yep, yep, yep. You did try. I mean, yeah, they, they, they gave you that option. Mm-hmm. Whoopsie. They could hide in basements and such. Dude, it's a supernova. That planet is gone. 
I don't think basements are going to help them much. <laughs> yeah, but I think... Hmm. I think the point is forewarned is forearmed. And, uh, That's true. No, no, I'm all for it. And you did try to do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, unless you're a jerk. Oh, I have to manually insert things. Reminds me of my Friday nights. chance to warn them later on? Actually, to tell you the truth, I when I played this, I thought the same thing. I'm like, okay, I tried once, but maybe I can get to another comm station and try again. You know, well, they could shut at least, you know, even a few hundred people wouldn't have to die type of thing. Well, so. my, 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 my first reaction when I thought about that is, well, she, she jammed the signal. I don't think going to a different console would matter much, but a more realistic option is, what are you going to do? Go search for another comm console, or stop her from blowing up the whole project. What's more important? Yeah, I'm, yeah. we're not talking about the real. We're talking about game mechanics. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, we're talking about options developers gonna put in the game, right? So, to, to because yeah, I mean. Ah, but they but see that, that that's that's the thing that um that that I love about it that most people are kind of upset about. Bioware didn't want you to have any of that solace. They wanted you to feel the full weight of that decision. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. They, they didn't want people to be able to hide behind the, well, at least I warned them. They wanted you to go, no, you made that decision, you pulled that switch, you live with the full consequences. They, they didn't want any option of you going, ah, it's off my hands, I warned them. Which, because you know, there's a lot of people that wouldn't do that. Whee! Whoa. And did, did, what did we say about fire? We said no. Well, you may not have been there for that conversation, but I think you got the point. I got the point now. May have not have been that one. So wait, you didn't make the decision the game did? Annex! What decision do you honestly expect them to give you? Your only your only choices were to destroy the relay and stop the Reapers from coming, or delay them, or not destroy the relay and watch the galaxy burn around you. What decision do you think the game should have given you? I think he's going back to the warning people thing. And if it's a matter of... Uh, see, I, I have to disagree. They're saying that since you didn't have the option to do it, it's less impactful. I think the fact that you didn't have the option to do it, other than you, you actually did try to do it, it didn't work, makes it more impactful for the reason I just said. You you don't get to throw off of, well, at least I, I warned someone or, or whatnot. You have to live with well, the So what, what was the... No, no, because, you know, attempting to is, is equally... You can just rationalize and be like, well, at least I tried to warn them, right? right? It, 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 it's the same, you know, rationalization or, or absolution of guilt. But so, it, it is far different than if you tried and failed to warn them, or if you actually succeeded in saving some of them. In other words, it's a much different feeling if you can even say, okay, I at least saved a hundred of them. That kind of can help soothe your conscience, and they didn't want that. They wanted you to, to know that they all died. Okay, yeah, I guess. I'm just saying if they wanted you to know what to have them all die, then why even bother putting in that option then, with you trying to warn them? Um, roleplay reasons, so that you can well, at least, I mean, because... for roleplay reasons, they should could have added in all sorts of other stuff. No, 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 because, no, there's a very, very good reason for that, because they wanted you to know that they all died, but that doesn't mean they didn't want to make you feel like you didn't even try. They wanted to make you feel like, despite your best efforts, they still all died. That's a big, big difference of feeling. It's, there's the, there's the, it's the difference between I didn't care and I cared but I couldn't do anything. Wait, what? If Shepard chooses not to destroy the relay, she can still escape in Master 3. 
Mass Effect 3 starts right away. Um, okay, so let's just completely rewrite a whole game that was already in development so that you guys can... What? <laughs> First of all, that's, that's, that's having to completely rewrite a whole bunch of things. Secondly, if Mass Effect 3 started six months earlier, they never would have found the Crucible. Liara never would have had time to research it. The, um, the, the, the planetary defenses wouldn't have been anywhere near as strong as they were. The fleets wouldn't have been grouped together. All of this stuff took place in the six months' time Shepard bought them. Okay, I, I think I think the whole purpose of this, I mean, we could do the nerd what if, what if, what if, what right. if. That's always fun and stuff like that, but I think the essence of this is that it's a disagreement of kind of... Um, of uh, game design, uh, it, sorry, yeah, or level design or DLC design. Uh, the big thing about Mass Effect that people really like was that your choices mattered, right? The consequences were in full. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I, I am supportive, like, I like how they did this, right? But I think some people are like, listen, if Mass Effect is about choices, I would have liked to have more choices, or even if they're very minor, even if they're very small, just something to help flesh out and roleplay my character. Right. I think that's the point, and I don't think, uh, you know, you can disagree with that too, too much. No, no, I actually, the only thing I disagree with is I think they gave you that option here. Yeah. And then and, and some people, and I would have to disagree, I, I think, you know, a few more options could have been put in. Um, nothing like huge, like I said, nothing impactful, but I just find it like, it's really strange that they tease you with warning with the Batarians, and Shepard tries once, and then she just goes, oh, oh well, you know. I know she's busy and she has other things, but it didn't kind of give you that that feeling, you know. Well, that. My, 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 my is, I, I actually just assumed that she was cutting off your communication, not just that terminal. But you, it, it was never explicitly said, so you can't really assume. That's true. That, can you? That's true. No, that that exposition would have been helpful. I'll agree with that. Exactly. 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 That's all. That's all. And then see, this is the thing: is that I really like this DLC. I think it was really well done. So these are very nitpick, minor things. Well, for you, but I mean, there is lots and lots of people out there that that this is not a minor nitpick. They really are genuinely upset about that. Oh. Yeah, you, for you, this is just a minor point that it would have been nice, but it's not really... For them, it's like the DLC is crap because of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing people in the chat. <laughs> I got bad news, they're not going to like Mass Effect 3. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, what what upsets me a lot about it is that there's so many people that, that, that are trying to act like they could have written it so much better, um, when the truth was they just don't seem to realize that Bioware knew exactly what they were doing. They yeah. knew what they were doing. They wanted you to feel these. And it's almost like an anger that they forced you to feel things you didn't want to. Well, there's lots of authors and writers that do that. you got to deal with it or just don't like the story. It's, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think a lot of it, to me, has, has the, uh, the kind of smacks of, well, I just want the always win option. I don't want to be faced with a no-win option Too because it's yeah. yeah yeah I th I, maybe that's what it is maybe that's what it is people are gamers they're used to games where you, you can always be the good guy no matter what and sometimes you know it's always a choice but sometimes there isn't arguing it's a bad game design how could it be a bad game design bad story maybe but game design I will never see the Weeper's arrival. All you had yeah. to do was stay asleep. Oh good, you did what I did too. Oh yeah! <laughs> She's gonna try and blow up everything! Exactly. Shoot her in the head! Apparently I have bad aim. Warning. Collision imminent. Warning. Collision imminent. Warning. Collision imminent. Warning. Joker, this is Shepard. I need a pickup, now. Communication system damaged. Damn it! Evacuation protocols in effect. All personnel report to escape shuttles. Where can I find an escape shuttle? Take the lift from this room to the external access. Oh, God. There, proceed to the communications tower. The remaining escape shuttles will be located on the tower's landing pad. I have to get to that comm tower and take a shuttle. 
only chance. There we go. Um, okay, guys, like in the chat, they're saying, well, you could argue the same thing about Mass Effect 3's ending. No, you couldn't. To, to avoid spoilers, but here's the difference. Everything here made logical sense. It made yeah. logical sense that you couldn't contact him again because you had to stop Kinson before she blew up everything. That was more important than warning the colony. That makes logical sense. The ending of Mass Effect 3 made no logical it was sense. Horrible. So it, it doesn't matter if it was a happy ending or a bad, bad ending. Yeah. It was just it wasn't a bad ending as in bad things happened. It was a bad ending as it was poorly written. If 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 if, if it had all made logical sense and just wasn't what I had preferred, I would not have been anywhere near as harsh on it as I would as I was. Yeah. yeah. So there's a huge difference there. Although Kel did make a good point. You know, if you still want the idea of bleak and nothing that you did matter, she, Shelley could have warned the people, right? But it would have been too late, and she would have seen those people trying to escape the planet get vaporized. And then you know, it's still the idea of, well, what all I tried, but everyone still died, right? To me, that's that's trying to Pretty nitpick much too same. much. It's kind of asking for a game to develop things for you specifically. Well, because, no, they did, tr okay, they put in the option to warn them. Okay, they put in the option, they said, look, here you, you tried, you made an attempt. Well, I want to try again. Well, we've got other things to do. You see what I'm saying? It's like asking a bit too much. Yeah, well, well, no, but to play, to play devil's advocate, to play devil's advocate, I think what's strange is that just the approach that Shepard does, like, seriously, like, she just tries once and then it's never mentioned again. And Shepard's supposed to be a heroic character, right? So, like, it's just weird that it is kind of a half measure compared to when she goes balls out to try to stop the explosion. It's just, I think it just seems inconsistent. That Shepard's just so blase I would, I would about, agree with oh, that. well, I tried. I would agree with that, except for the simple fact that they wrote a very plausible reason why she couldn't. They wrote it in such a way that it made perfect oh, sense okay. that she couldn't do it. All right. I mean, honestly, I'm getting sick. And I just want all the fucking Batarians to die. I'm sick talking. I'm sick talking. I'm sick I don't want them to die. I do. I want them to die now. That's I blame me. them all. Nope. Exterminate them all. No survivors. End of discussion. <laughs> I will. I will ask a question. And this is to the chat as well. Are you guys suggesting that it's bad writing, or or just that you would have preferred something else? Because the thing the thing that I, I don't I don't understand, or maybe I'm not understanding, is that everything here makes logical sense. There's a reason why she couldn't. There's a reason why you know you you did other things instead of warning them again. So the writing doesn't. I don't see a fault in the writing. I could maybe see a fault in just it didn't go down the way you would have preferred it to. I, see, no, I think, I think it was good, but not good enough. And it's not has to do with, I don't know, it has nothing to do with you not liking what happened. Like, like I, I'll say this a thousand times again, I liked the DLC, it was fine. Um, I, I didn't mind, you know, the consequences, right? I didn't want a happy rainbow ending. But, at least, I, I do remember the survivors kind of just rubbed me a little wrong way that, you know, it's not that it was a it was bad or illogical. It was just it seemed inconsistent. It seemed inconsistent with the idea of Shepard and some of the other important choices that Shepard has made, like bring down the sky, for example. Right? They approached it in a very like you have two choices. Go ahead. So I think the complaint is just like for an RPG that's all about choice and consequence. They didn't really give you much of a choice, and when they did give you a choice, it really didn't mean anything to begin with. And, uh, you know, that's fine. Like, I think that's a, that's a fine complaint. I, this DLC wasn't really about that. This DLC was talking, was meant to have a more linear story. Okay, now, Maybe when you're some saying... some people didn't like that. When you're saying inconsistent, you mean inconsistent in how they generally handle these situations, not yes. in Shepard's character, right? Inconsistent on how they've run this franchise, what role-playing games are, what role-playing games offer, yes. Okay. It's inconsistent in the mechanic of the game. And what they have demonstrated in the past. That's the big thing. That's I all. think Sounds. I just beat Mass Effect 2. Woo! Woo! I don't think there's anything else left to kill me. Well, you know, there's the Reapers, but... 
I think I'll get out of here before then. You know what though? Let's not, let's not, let's not rock the boat. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> let's, I, I don't make it to the, the thing in time. Okay, where am I supposed to go? Seriously, where am I, where am I going? Am I, going I, I don't know, dude. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay. Could have died right there. Shepherd to Normandy. Joker, do you read me? Shepard, you have become an annoyance. You fight against inevitability, dust struggling against cosmic winds. This seems a victory to you, a star system sacrificed. But even now, your greatest civilizations are doomed to fall. Your leaders will beg to serve us. <laughs> That's not Joker. That's not Joker at all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're right. Wait a second. Maybe Joker, did you this, gain weight? <laughs> but we'll fight you regardless. Just like we did Sovereign. Just like I'm doing now. However insignificant we might be, we will fight. We will sacrifice and we will find a way. That's what humans do. Know this as you die in vain. Your time will come. Your species will fall. Prepare yourselves for the arrival. Bye. See you when you get here. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Roger that. I have successfully beat Mass Effect 2 with one life, my first try. Awesome. Very proud of myself. With a class that I might add, I have never played before. There you go. Congratulations. My pride will last all of 30 seconds starting now. We'll see if you can do the same for Mass Effect 3. There's some pretty intense fights in that sucker, too. Oh, crap. My pride's gone now. Thanks. I was going to enjoy it for 30 whole seconds, last Sorry. Seven. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I'm with you. I think I'm going to get slaughtered at some points. <laughs> Congratulations, now you're going to fail. <laughs> Just like an asteroid, Simon. <laughs> no! This is your future. Of the relay, that piece was my favorite. So the good news is that property values have gone way down now in the Viper system. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Too soon, Inferno! <laughs> <laughs> it's fictional. <laughs> it's fictionally too soon. Okay. Huh. Looks like you've recovered. Admiral Hackett. Sounds like you went through hell down there. How are you feeling? Fine. No more visions, if that's what you mean. I wasn't expecting to see you here. You went out there as a favor to me. I decided to debrief you in person. That was before the mass relay exploded and destroyed an entire Batariot system. What the hell happened out there, Commander? Aw, oh, crap. I'm never going to be captain. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, just when you want, he's like, I came here to promote you, but... Mm, <laughs> that's what they should have said, like, when I activated the project. I was like, would you like to activate the project? <sighs> Never gonna be capped. <laughs> Little orphan shepherd, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> no dessert. Have you received any intel about what happened? All I know is I sent you out there to break Amanda Kenson out of prison. And now an entire system is destroyed. I hope you could fill in the leap of logic between those two events. Ooh, someone just came up with a good idea. As a reward for making it through this whole game on my first try, we wax her eyebrows. Hey, okay, good. Start Mass Effect 3. Yeah, start Mass Effect 3 with a clean slate. 
And then when I die, he starts getting... Because I, I agree that, you know what, I'm kind of proud of this achievement. I think a small little reward is... I agree. Now, we'll Plus keep... Plus, we don't have to look at those god-awful eyebrows. We'll keep her eyebrows the same. No, she can dye her eyebrows. Duh. I was going to say, we'll keep them the same color, because that just wouldn't be realistic. Because, you know, they don't have hair dye in the future. Nope. So, so, yay, we're going to give her her eyebrows back. <laughs> oh. Although, Alpha does make a good point. It does give her character. I confirmed Dr. Kenson's proof. Not the to Reapers me. Were <laughs> okay, fair enough. You gotta look at her face. Yep. So. Kenson sedated me for almost two days. I started the engines with little more than an hour left. I tried to warn the Batarian colony, but... Time ran out. The Batarians report no survivors from Aratat. At least you tried. And look at the bright side. I'll die pretty quickly and, and they'll be right back. The Reaper invasion really was a threat. Yeah, that's a great no, bright side. <laughs> we literally had minutes to spare. I'm sure all the details are in your report. I won't lie to you, Shepard. The Batarians will want blood, and there's just enough evidence for a witch hunt. And we don't want war with the Batarians. Not with the Reapers at the galaxy's edge. What are you saying? You did what you did for the best of reasons, but there were more than 300,000 Batarians in that system. All dead. They died to save trillions of lives. If I could have saved them, you bet your ass I would have. You're preaching to the choir, Commander. If it were up to me, I'd give you a damn medal. Unfortunately, not everyone will see it that way. So what do you suggest? Am I in trouble, Daddy Evidence Hackett? Evidence against you is shoddy at best. Eep. But at some point, you'll have to go to Earth and face the music. Oh, God. I can't stop it. But I can and will make them fight for it. Am I in trouble? Could I go to jail or be executed? Or <gasps> Demoted? <laughs> nice priorities there, Shepard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you aboard a Cerberus vessel. I don't like Cerberus or the way they do things. But they brought you back to life. And they're actually doing something about the state of the galaxy. Besides, I'm not so sure this is a Cerberus ship anymore. Right. Is the Alliance concerned about the Batarians' response to this incident? Very. The Batarians have been looking for an excuse to wage war on us since we showed up in the galaxy. If the Reapers invade, we need the galaxy to work together. If we're at war with the Batarians, the other races will be hesitant to give aid to either side. That's a very good point Arcalian brings up. You know, Saren did this kind of crap all the time, and he walked away clean. <laughs> this is so true. I, I mean, not quite in these numbers, and hopefully not in such a political hotspot, but yeah! He really kind of did. <laughs> is the Alliance prepared for a Reaper invasion? That's hard to say. It took multiple fleets and the Destiny Ascension to bring Sovereign down. And that was just one Reaper. If the Reapers come in force, we're just not ready. I stop a Reaper invasion and they want to put me up on charges? It's not a matter of preference, Shepard. You'll be a convenient scapegoat for avoiding open war. Yay for scapegoats. I don't like Do whatever you have to do out here. But when Earth calls... You make sure you're there with your dress blues on, ready to take the hit. In the meantime, you keep this. I don't need to see a report to know you did the right thing. Yes, sir. You've done a hell of a thing, Commander. I noticed he didn't say good thing. <laughs> nope, it's, no, it's true. You just did a hell of a thing. Yay, experience and stuff. Oh, look, a heavy weapons upgrade. <laughs> Better health, more credits, all sorts of stuff that I don't need. Woo! Let's save this game, go to the credits, and enjoy the win. Yay. Oh, dangerous girl. I don't think she's ever going to be a captain. Ever. <laughs> ever. That would be funny. I was going to promote you to captain. Then... <laughs> and now you are a scapegoat. Yay! 
Hey. Mass Effect 2 completed. Done. Ooh. Finito. What, All done, what's, baby. What's finished First in step. French? Uh, fini. Fini! That's kind of easy. <laughs> yeah, French. Well, that's what you get when a bunch of languages come from the same language. What do you want? Yep. Yeah. So, Mass Effect 2. Uh, good job on doing everything on one go, on Woo! your first go on Iron Man. That's quite the achievement. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm very proud of myself. So, what were some of your favorite things about Mass Effect 2? Uh, Shelly Shepard's eyebrows. <laughs> um, I actually, I really enjoyed, at least this playthrough, the kind of the lighthearted approach to I've been taking the whole thing like the Shelly Sharpies, trying to draw on people's faces with them, or, um, trying to clean stuff off of Tally's mask. Oh my god, the cat did it again! Jesus, cat! I've really got to turn some lights on in here. Cat's just like, hey, I heard you finished Mass Effect 2. I want to chime in. <laughs> also, as a reward head. for finishing it, you should feed me. <laughs> He's sticking his head so that the light from the monitor gives him the ghost appearance. <laughs> yeah, I think he knows he's doing that now. I think so too. Uh, this is a bad idea. Okay, um, of course I love the stories. Uh, that's, that's my thing of Mass Effect, is that the gameplay is great, but the stories are what are amazing to me. Yep. I have to agree, it, it's games like this that, you know, really reinforce, um, uh, you know, video games as a storytelling medium. And how a lot of these games now, the gameplay itself is kind of secondary to the stories that are being told and what are bringing people in and really wanting them to engage and why they want to, why they care about things and they want to see things to the end. You know, it really invest. It really lets the player invest in these characters, these fictional characters, which are pretty great. I uh, I really liked. I was amazed when I first played the game at the pure selection of NPCs and how each of them had a very distinct personality. They weren't two-dimensional at all. They had depth. And I really like the loyalty mission idea. Although it is, if you really think hard about it, it's kind of silly to have these people sort out a few issues before, you know, going into a suicide mission. Right. But, but it does kind of make sense. It builds trust and leadership. But it also allows you to go, each, each character gets to have their story where they don't have to share it with anyone else. And you can really focus on them. And it's pretty great. It's definitely a matter of convenience. And it does feel a bit weird that everyone had these huge problems all popping up at the same time. But the thing about that is that, you know, that's, that's RPGs. It's like, you know, any RPG, you go back to like, say, Final Fantasy VII and, oh my god, everyone in the city needs your help all today. It's yeah. crazy. It's cra it makes you wonder what they do when you're not there, because <laughs> the world would fall apart. <laughs> the, exactly, everything just collapses. So I mean, that's just game convenience. Um, and, and and I think they at least did a really good job of uh, choosing problems that you had to solve that really were serious problems that really could affect performance if not taken care of. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone's loyalty mission were, you know, I'm going to be exiled from exile my people. My dad, who's dead for 10 years, is suddenly back and he may need help. Or, you know, uh, I'm crazy and this is the center of my crazy. All of these are issues that are serious psychological problems. Yeah. Or, or, you know, even logistical problems. Serious um, personal problems. Right. Because it, it, I know a huge um, criticism from a lot of people is that you know, you've got a suicide mission to do, and these are professionals. Is this really such a big problem? Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they, yeah, because if, if they're going into it, and in the back of their mind, they're regretting not doing something, right? it might affect things. It, right? might, it might affect their performance, even just 10%. And 10% on a suicide mission, if you can avoid it, is not acceptable. Besides, and also, this is science fiction. So this is science fantasy, right? Like, right. And not everything has to have a gritty real world approach, right? It was rationalized, it was explained, it was delivered in a great way. And uh, this is my favorite game out of the Mass Effect trilogy, hands down. I, I um, I'm still torn by that because, uh, and like I said earlier, I think Mass Effect 3 is overall the best game I've ever played. But. I can't deny that when I finish Mass Effect 2, I feel so much better than when I finish Mass Effect 3. Well, that's the thing. Like, this is, has a holistic thing, right? There's a clear goal, 
a clear solution and like that that end that suicide mission oh god yep. it's beautiful how everything's set up and it's just what everyone wanted right your decisions in the rest of your game has a direct influence on what happens uh, you know, not only do choices matter, but you know your decisions at that moment matters. It's it's high intensity, high pressure. It really makes you think and plan and really take a leadership role when delegating people at certain tasks. It's just uh, just a great, great experience. I certainly think that the suicide mission, especially the first time you play it, was one of the best experiences in a video game. The yeah. idea that any wrong decision could kill this guy and that guy, and, and that's that's really hard to duplicate. Um, yeah. And so I really love that. Now, I will say this. What I'm th one thing I'm looking forward to is um, I'm going to be, whenever I finish Mass Effect 3, God knows when that'll be, uh, I'm going to have a mod installed that will make the game end in a way that I really like, that I really enjoy. And I'm curious to see how my overall thoughts of the game are when I don't have a crap ending to look forward to, you know? <laughs> um, so, because, I, I mean, to me, that could really change the whole experience. And I have three different DLCs for it that I've never played before that I will oh, be doing. Oh, that will be nice. Yeah, doing Blind and Iron Man, which will be fun. Mm hmm So, yay! On to Mass Effect 3! Yeah. Yay!